The New York Times Magazine has a blockbuster of a story on Rupert Murdoch's media empire. It outlines how the Murdoch family, who founded Fox News and Sky News, has enormous political reach across the globe. Here's a video that accompanied the article. Promises made, promises kept. This is the night Fox crossed the line between where the network ends and President Trump begins. And I'm going to tell you how we got here. Joining us now is the Times media columnist Jim Rutenberg. He spent six months investigating this piece. He traveled to three continents and interviewed 150 people. I've been wondering where you've been. Yeah, we've been. Well, there are two of us. My partner, John Mahler, and I have been um, working this really hard for several months. Yes, we put on a lot of air miles. That was a very ominous sort of Manchurian candidate-like clip that we just played there. And I think that what people in the U.S. Um, mostly tie the Murdochs with is Fox News, and you just showed Sean Hannity there. But what your article shows is they have tentacles everywhere and are more powerful than many people know. They have elected prime ministers in other countries. They are vast. It, what it really is, it's a, it's a global machine, right? And and it's almost in these other countries taking it as a given that the Murdoch press is one of the most powerful forces in their country, in some cases almost like another political party. And here in this country, let's just dive in to that. One of the interesting things, it's been reported elsewhere, but you reveal in more detail that Rupert Murdoch was not a fan of Donald Trump's originally. In fact, here's what you write. Murdoch recognized Trump's appeal as a tabloid character and ratings driver, but he did not seem to see him as a serious person, let alone a credible candidate for president. He's a blanking idiot, Murdoch would say when asked about Trump. So how is it possible that they now have such a symbiotic relationship between Fox News and the Trump White House? Well, First of all, one thing to understand about Rupert Murdoch is he does go where his audience is. Now, his audience for most of his products is normally kind of center right to much farther right these days, especially. But Trump did not, it was not initially a Murdoch kind of guy. Uh, Rupert Murdoch is on record as being very much, for instance, for immigration reform. He's been, he's for free trade. Environmentally green. For a moment. <laughs> that was a little shorter lived. Good. But. But so, and we forget this now, but there was a point where Fox News and Trump were at war, right? With Megyn Kelly challenging him in, de in a debate. There was months of back and forth. Some of their coverage would drive Trump crazy. But as he comes in to, toward, he starts getting close to getting the nomination, you see things start to shift. But I guess the question is, do the Murdochs have um, positions based on some sort of moral code or is it all just about winning and ratings? I, don't, I think in, to some degree, yes, it's about giving their audience what the audience wants. But if you look at the sum total of, of the kind of the direction of the Murdoch press across the world, it is inexorably kind of moving to the right. Now, he's a pragmatist, Rupert is, so he will kind of get behind a, a, a more liberal government here or there. But it's really mostly going in this other direction. But it's also very interesting to see how he deals with the outsized influence that President Trump now has over Fox News, um, along with, you know, the president's friend and ally, Sean Hannity. When a Fox contributor attempts to say something that might be seen as unflattering about President Trump, and it happened with Stephen Hayes here, um, you write about what happens. After the Fox contributor and Weekly Standard editor Stephen Hayes called Trump, quote, a clown, Trump faxed Fox News anchor Brett Baer a copy of his resume with a note scrawled across it in black marker, tell Hayes no clown could have done all this. Yeah. This is President Trump influencing their editorial. Well, that was at the point during the campaign when they were still at war. And it actually apparently happened more than once with uh, when he was called a clown by uh, Charles Krautheimer as well. We have some reporting on that. So that is still during that period. But he is known to he's gone on on air, their air and complained about some of their people. So it's not always in lockstep, but especially in prime time and, and through like a Sean Hannity, they are very, very close. And we we see it play out all the time as we did before the election and, and now since. And yet not all of the Murdochs are comfortable with this. I mean, you talk about the rift that has happened between the sons. One of them being more liberal is married to a more liberal woman who's very uncomfortable with the direction of Fox News and the Trump presidency. And so how does that play out? Well, this became a big point of, of conflict within the family. 
Uh, James Murdoch is more of a, I think he'd call himself a centrist. And he saw, especially Roger Ailes, if we all remember, uh, has to leave the network uh, amid a, a sexual har harassment scandal. Uh, so James Murdoch sees this as an opportunity to maybe bring the network kind of a rein it in a little bit. He's not, he's still expects it to be a conservative network, but he thinks maybe we'll give it more of a kind of traditional. But he lost. He loses. Lachlan Murdoch comes in and, and now is the, the heir apparent to his father. And Lachlan is much more conservative and really doesn't have, see a problem. Why, why get in the way of something that's making a lot of money and winning in the ratings? Look, it's an exhaustive and fascinating piece. Everybody should read just how vast their influence is well beyond Fox News. Jim Rittenberg, thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thank you. Great to see you.